Pedro Silva Correia, I'm a PhD student at CBPF in Rio de Janeiro. And at first I'd like to congratulate and thank the organizers for these two weeks. And I'm glad to be here having this opportunity to give, give you a little bit about uh, one of my recent works. So, uh, its work is in contribution with my advisor, Fernando Vinello. And sorry for this, this is my best picture, I think. It's my cost grained version of me. So, the spin entanglement wave in a cost grained optical lattice. Uh, is available on archive about some weeks ago. And here we present um, entanglement behavior of entanglement uh, in a spin chain, in a cost grain version of a spin chain. So before we get into my work, uh, I will do a briefly review about maybe the principal experimental work that motivates our cost grainy approach. Here, Fukuhara et al. measure uh, entanglement between spin pairs and spin chain performed via uh, cold atoms in optical lattice. So they start with a spin chain of spin ups and one impurity in the center of the chain. So they evolve the system through the Hamiltonian and measure the entanglement between pairs, symmetric pairs around the center of this chain. So here we have these results. Here in head, uh, starting with impurity in position zero. Uh, here we have the concurrence between spin minus one, one, minus two, and two, in, in green, minus three, and three. So the full lines here is the theoretical predictions of the evolution of concurrence with time. and the dots are the experimental results. So they see this uh, propagation wave around the center. So a crucial step in this experimental procedure is the detection. Uh, here, they are able to resolve each single atom in the chain. So they do this by a fluorescence image technique that is roughly described by this, this scheme. So all, all atoms in the optical lattice are illuminated by a uh, laser pulse, and if light is scattered, I know that my, my atom is in state one, spin down, and if no light, the atom will be in the state zero, spin up. So to detect this light, that light, uh, a high resolution microscope is required, a quantum gas microscope here. And this is a standard picture of this image this fluorescence image. So even here, it's difficult to, to resolve neighboring atoms. So, and even here, uh, this picture go undergo through a digital processing of image. So we think that in uh, truly many body systems, these neighboring atoms cannot be resolved anymore with this equipment. So in our motivation is that, uh, how entanglement can be survived when we have an equipment that are not capable to resolve single atom detections. So we, we did a cost grain approach that we start from the simplest case when our detector cannot resolve two neighboring atoms. So we have this situation. Uh, they cannot resolve if the light comes from the left or the right. And the amount of light comes from a single atom already saturate the detector. So if these two neighboring atoms are emitting light, all these three situations I have this blurred detection. And we can relate this blurred detection to our cost grain spin in a cost grain level. So we construct a map that will model this cost grain level. We call lambda CG 2 to 1. Here is 2 is to 1. 2 spins to 1 that we, we mapped. And so here, following this physical intuition of this blur detection, we construct this cost grain map here that acts on a density matrix of two qubits. So here are the population terms 
So if I have no excitation, no impurity, spin impurity in the the microscopic level, we expect that this in the cross-screen level we have not uh, spin impurity too. The uh, signs we cannot distinguish if the light comes from the left or the, the right. These terms, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, are mapped to a one spin impurity in the cross grain level. And size the, the detector saturates with light come from one atom. We have this situation too. The state 1, 1, 1, 1 are mapped to a single spin impurity in cross grain level. Here are the coherence between the subspace of no impurity, 0, 0, with an impurity subspace in the, in the microscopic level and are mapped in that form. Uh, zero, 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 0001 goes to zero, 01, zero, zero, 0010 zero goes to zero, 01, and zero, zero, 0011 one goes to, to zero, 01. And this term here, 1 over square root of root of 3, is to ensure the complete positiveness of this cross grain map. And finally, we have these new terms. Here are the signs we cannot distinguish these states in the cross grain level. We do not expect that this this coherence can can be able to contribute in in the cross grain level. So these new terms serves here. And from this cross grain level that I made two atoms to one effective, and I can through a simple composition of this map achieve another cross grain levels another. Uh, levels of description of the system. So here we call level zero the microscopic state. And if you compose this cross green map one time, we can reach this this second second level of cross grain, for example, where four atoms are mapped to one single atom the in the cross grain version. And you can do this in arbitrary times, arbitrary level that you map uh, n atoms, a power of two n atoms, to a single one through a composition of these two to one cross grain map. So time is ticking. Yeah. So I'm going to show the result for this first cross grain level. Uh, I will not show you with calculation, but here you consider such a uh, spin chain in the microscope level and it's related cross grain level of spins. So in this first plot in, in red are the concurrence between spins minus one and one in the cross grain level. And the blue signals here are the entanglement, the concurrence of the related spins in the microscopic level. The first one is minus one and one, the second one minus two and two and, and so on. See so yeah, here the concurrence between minus two and two in the cross grain level, and the related uh, concurrence in the microscopic state. So even here in the first level of cross grain, we can see this out outstanding entanglement wave right, with less magnitude, but even here we end, uh, uh, the entanglement is alive. So we ask how is the boundary of this entanglement? When this entanglement cannot be detected? using our model. So here are the comparison with the experimental results. One, one interesting thing that we found is that the maximum value uh, in the experimental results are closer to our cost grain level beyond the, the theoretical prediction. We don't know, we suppose maybe this can be uh, uh, some difficulty in the experimental situation maybe a resolution problem like we are mapping here. So I, I'm going to skip this. this uh, we see the negativity too, as in entanglement quantifier. And here we generalize our result to see how, how entanglement survive, uh, how is the limit of the entanglement detection. Here we made, we made um, n spins to a one any arbitrary spins to one. And here the maximum value of the entanglement in the cross grain level. And we see that the, the
the amount of entanglement decays exponentially with the level of cross graining and here is the summation of the the concurrence between a uh, spin pairs symmetric pairs in the spin box that you make the cross grain so in from this graph here we can see that in the first cross grain level and the second cross grain level the entanglement can be detected this black dashed line is the experimental error in the experimental procedure and from the third level maybe we cannot distinguish we cannot more detect this entanglement and another question that that to ask is if you only have access to this cost grain uh, signal here the cost grain components can you say something about the microscopic level so we derive this lower bound for the concurrence between in, in the microscopic level so from here this is the the entanglement between spin is minus one e one in the second level cross grain and from here we see that if i i have some signal of concurrence in the cross grain level i know for sure that there is some pair of spins that have a bigger value of concurrence in the microscopic level so that's it and summarizing so our results suggest that even if we're not able to fully resolve the system, entanglement can be still detected at some cross grain levels and show that it's possible to have some information about the microscope entanglement even if we have a section to the cross grain description. So another thing that this cross grain approach can be used in other scenarios. Now, for example, we are interested in see how um, you have visibility emerges from unitary evolutions in the microscopic state, for example. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. So there is there are questions. Good. Pedro, 